The market is going to the moon. And although cards are starting to rise already, there is still time for you to get in. Make sure to watch till the end today so you know exactly which cards to invest in to make you the most coins this week on EAFC 24. If you're looking for cheap and safe EAFC 24 coins, look no further than u4gm.com and use my code ELITE, E-L-Y-Y-T, for 5% off at checkout. Welcome back to episode two of Trading to Glory. Not only did you guys smash it for episode one, but you also gave me over a hundred players to look at in terms of investments. And I'm gonna give you guys my favorite investments and the ones that you should absolutely stay away from. I appreciate the support and let's go ahead and smash 500 likes on today's video in 24 hours. If we can do that, I'm gonna drop a very special episode three for you guys tomorrow. Anyways, Diani is 113K. I obviously spent more than what I could have gotten them uh, for on day one. She was down at about 70,000 coins for a lot of the day, but I didn't have enough coins to invest in her quite yet. And I'm still confident that she's going to rise higher. And the reason is quite simple. She's high rated and she's meta. And you don't need too much more for a good formula to make some coins this week. But let's take a look at some of the cards that you guys suggested. Leonardo Parisi asked about Van de Vin, a 78 rated center back at about 18,000 coins right now. His stats are undeniable. Great physicality, great pace, good defense. It's a really, really good 78 rated card and it shows with his price. Is it going to go up any more? And the answer is probably but it's not a good investment. Most cards will go up over the course of the next week. I would sell everything around Thursday of this coming week before the standard edition releases. Now, once we know the meta and which cards are actually going to be in a lot of the professional players' teams, we're going to see some of those cards rise beyond this week. But over the course of the next few days, starting with this morning with Squad Battle Rewards, we're going to continue to see these cards skyrocketed up in price. So Van de Ven, and if we take a look at Van de Ven on his graph, we can see that his graph has already plateaued a bit. He did have a rise two days ago, but he kind of hasn't risen since. He had a peak of about 23,000 coins, got right back down to 16K because of all the supply that's been coming in the last couple of days from marquee matchups, from promo packs, and now we're gonna see squad battle rewards, and he's about 18,000 coins right now. Is he a good investment? I don't think so. There are better cards to go for. He's too low rated, which means too easy to pack. The supply is going to be overwhelming for him. And even though he might go up a few thousand coins, there are cards that will rise a much higher percentage. You can apply that exact same logic to cards like Joe Gomez, who's only 79 rated. Alan St. Maximin, who seems to have plateaued as well. Camavinga, who I don't think is gonna hold value as long as people do think. Abanez, who's 11,000 coins as a Saudi defender, it's just not gonna stay there. 80 rating is too low. But there could be an exception to this rule, and that could be Ansu Fati. The reason that this card is so expensive is not because this 78 rated card is absolutely fantastic, it's because everybody wants to use Ansu Fati in evolutions, taking him from 78 to 84 or 85 rated, and he is very expensive because of that. 8,000 coins still for a 78 rated card that really isn't in anybody's team other than his evolution. So they are taking his tradable card off the market, making him untradeable, which means that even if they were to ever stop using that Ansu Fati card, they can't go and put him back onto the market. That doesn't stop the supply coming from packs though. So if you do go with Fati, tread very carefully still. And it's Sunday morning now, and we're going to get squad battle rewards. By the time you're watching this, they'll be out and affecting the market. And the biggest thing that you need to know about squad battle rewards is the fact that they bring buying power. That's going to give people more coins to spend on the players that they want. On top of the fact that I think a lot of people have actually waited for squad battle rewards to make their investments in anticipation that the supply is going to bring them down. And what we've seen in previous years, they actually start to go up pretty soon after the rewards drop. So this is something to remember for every Sunday morning, Saturday night in terms of your investments. Now, when it comes to squad building challenges, there's a lot of fodder cards, non-rare golds that'll be affected. Cards that are going for 3.5K drop down to like 1.5K for a few hours. You can get in on some of those investments. And here's a couple of the cards that I'm looking at. The way that I'm finding these cards is I'm going to Futbin, I'm searching for version, gold, non-rare, and then I'm sorting by price. 
Now, there's going to be cards here that are up just because they're the cheapest solution on Futben currently. Like, let's take a look right now at Driussi. Driussi right now is 2,000 coins, but if we take a look at his hourly graph, he's never really been up to 2,000 coins until now. So it's not exactly a card that I'm gonna be looking for. But if we look at Bellamu, her card is 2,700 coins. And if we look at her hourly graph, she has stayed above 2,000 coins and upwards of 4K a lot of the time because she is consistently needed in squad building challenges. Then Grace Fisk is another example of this where her card has consistently been above 1,000 coins. This is a good opportunity when the supply hits to try to bid or snipe some of these cards for 350, 500 coins, and then flip them a few hours later when they go back and recover to their normal price. Senjuma HDI asked about Benzema. And Benzema is a 90 rated card, super high rated. So you would assume great investment because there's not a lot of supply, but that's not really the case. If you take a look at his card, he has actually the cheapest 90 rated card in the game right now. And even though that doesn't necessarily mean he's fodder, he could be close to it. I don't think a lot of people are going out and submitting Benzema into the De Bruyne SPC unless they have him untradeable and don't want him. There's nobody going onto the market and buying this card to complete the SBC. It just wouldn't make sense. So he's not quite fodder yet, but he will be. And so he's not going to rise with meta investments. People aren't looking to get Benzema into their team. It's not their desired striker at 79 pace. And so Kareem Benzema is not an investment that I would go with again. These are all cards that I would sell and reinvest in other cards. Now, Benzema could be an investment for a long-term hold. He could go up in price because he will become fodder. And as more SBCs drop, then there's going to be more demand for fodder cards. But 90 rated is not the rating we're looking at for fodder at this point in the year. And to be honest, if we're even looking at fodder, it would be probably at the 85 to 86 rated range. I wouldn't be looking at the cards that are this high rated because this early on, you're just not seeing these kind of cards rise. Believe it or not, moments still exists in EAFC 24. It is a forgotten game mode, but it's back. And as you can see, you can actually get some decent rewards this year from this game mode. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this Sam Kerr because you can use it to complete these moments objectives in which you can get a 50K pack for 60 moments stars. This will take you about an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes at the most if you want to get a 50K pack. And the big kicker about it is that it is tradable. If you're getting bored of the market and you wanna open a pack, this could be an easy way to do so. Marcus Rashford, a different story though. His card is meta with a lot of different desirable characteristics. This was suggested by Jimmy Ryan and his card has not stopped rising over the last 24 hours, even longer than that. 160 was his low point. He's gotten up to 230, as you can see in the bottom left. He's gone up a lot and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Now, on those low supply days where squad battle rewards happen, or a 7.5K pack for an SBC drops, you're not gonna see anything bad happen to Rashford's price. The only thing that could really hurt Rashford's price is like 100K packs in the store, and that would kind of infect the entire market, not just Rashford. So you're looking at a pretty safe investment as well. 85 isn't the most high rated card, but it's also not low rated either. And with these stats to back it up, it's gonna be a card that continues rising. He's at 230 now. I think he'll be at 300 within the next 48 hours. If you still have a lot of coins left over, this could be a card to go for. Even Ter Stegen got requested, and I have no idea why, because he's been 212K since release. He doesn't even sell, but definitely do not buy him. I really wanna stress to you guys that even if you do not think you're going to make the perfect investment, do make an investment because we're going to start seeing cards rise even more today and tomorrow and the next day, all the way into Wednesday or Thursday. And these cards will be almost double, if not double, or more than the current prices right now. So don't be afraid to invest, avoid the low rateds, and you will be good to go. 25 minutes until rewards, we'll get some trading and some packs in, but until then, 
Let's see if we can make some coins on some solution trading. What I went out and did is I bid 300 coins on all of these Asun Martinez cards. Now I didn't just choose a random card. Asun Martinez right now, even though she is only 450 coins, which means I'm only making a little over 100 coins per card, which is fine, but as you can see over the last day or so, she has spiked three or four different times. The first time to a thousand coins, the second time to 1600. The third time she went almost extinct at 5K. She spiked again two hours later at about 3000 coins and now has settled back down at discard price. So what I'm doing here is I'm bidding on all of these cards so that there's no risk. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to list all of these cards for various prices between 1,000 and 5,000 coins over the course of the next six hours because I am about to go to sleep after I open my squad battle rewards. So we're gonna list these cards for various prices over the next six hours. And if this card spikes in price at any time tonight, I'm gonna be making a ton of coins. And I don't even have to be online for when that card does spike. Now, why is it spiking? Of course, it's because of various SBC solutions. These cards will go up if they are deemed the cheapest in the SBCs on Futbin. And so what'll happen is they'll spike up in price for probably 20 to 30 minutes, and then they'll go back down once Futbin updates their prices. So that's what we're listing these cards for right now. We've got a few for like two to three K. I'm gonna list the last few for a little bit less, just in case it spikes, but not quite as much as we might want it to. And that way we have a little bit of variation on these prices. It's the same idea for this card. I should probably go out and get a few more during squad battle rewards, but for her card, she's also 500 coins right now, but she has spiked several times to about two to 3,000 coins over the last 48 hours. Let's go 2,400 on buy now, 2,000 on start price, list that card up. And before we finish off this video with some packs, let's talk about Zhao Cancelo because he opens up a whole Pandora's box of investing. Zhao Cancelo is up to 39,000 coins now, as you guys can see. And a lot of that is because of his performance against Celta Vigo, which for the first 80 minutes was kind of lackluster, but he did have a goal and an assist in the comeback win in which Barcelona scored three goals in the final 10 minutes to beat Celta Vigo. Zhao Cancelo assisted Robert Lewandowski and scored the winner. So I think from a left back position, that's probably going to get him a team of the week card. Now, of course, Lewandowski could still get that team of the week card, but I would assume that EA are going to give it to Zhao Cancelo. But if you take a look at his graph over the past day, he's gone from 20 K to 40 K. A lot of that rise is because of that performance and people anticipating him getting a team. And it is now confirmed that gold cards do go out of packs when they get a team of the week. And I would assume for any promo card as well. And I think it's proof enough when you look at Dybala's card, who is 132,000 coins, but his inform is 107. So that just shows the supply of the week. The gold card is obviously out of packs. And so we know that going into team of the week two, we can make some very good investments in cards that are going out of packs. Jao Cancelo is going to be a good one. Harry Kane's probably going to get a team of the week as well. But I'm also interested on some of those lower rated cards that are still SBC fodder for hybrid nations, hybrid leagues, and those other SBCs that could go up a ton of percentage as well. Asun Martinez is also already selling for about 2,000 coins. I'm excited to see maybe she sells for three or four K here in the next couple of minutes if we're lucky, but that's going to have to happen soon because squad battle rewards are in about two and a half minutes. Let's see if we can pack something good. We get a 25 K pack, a 15 K pack and a 7.5 K pack all tradable. That's going to add a lot of buying power to the market. I'm excited to see what that does to our prices of all the cards that we invested in this video and on my transfer list. Let's start with the 7.5K pack and work our way up. First pack is going to be French, Striker, Man United, that's Martial. Was starting to really hope for PSG there. You never know what it could be when PSG pops up. It could be Colomani, it could be Mbappe, it could even be one of those players from the women's teams. And we get a shadow card. So the shadow card is actually the best pull out of that pack. For the 15K pack, gives us an extra rare gold as well as being double of the pack we just opened. Center defensive mid from England. Oh, 
I was trying to do the math in my head. I'm like, when did Bayern pick up an English center defensive mid? But it's on the women's team, of course. Uh, Stanway and Galton. We got a couple of English uh, women's players, and they don't really sell for all too much. Now for the 25K pack premium gold players. Let's see if we can get ourselves a walkout. French? CDM. I don't know if there's anybody good that could possibly be a French CDM. Uh, in the game this year. Conte is probably the highest rated. Yeah, that's a really bad pack. And we actually did have a couple Asun Martinez's sell now for 3,000 coins, so it's working like a charm. And if you made it to the very end of the video, comment Asun hype down below. That'll show me you made it to the end of the video so I can appreciate all the OGs supporting the videos all the way through. And I'll make sure to drop a heart on your comment. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.